friends, I'm Ashley, and I am so pumped to hang out with you today. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a question that nobody could seem to answer? Like, why is it called a hamburger when it's not made out of ham? Or why is this critter called a guinea pig when it's a rodent and clearly not a pig? Or, or why is it called a hot dog when they're not made out of dogs? Why is it called a pair of pants if it's only one item? Or why is it called a butterfly when they have nothing to do with butter or flies? See what I mean? Sometimes we see things in the world around us that make us pause and wonder why things are the way they are. We wonder why those things happen or who decided they should be that way. Now, I know things like the names of hamburgers and guinea pigs and hot dogs aren't life's biggest questions. There's so much happening in the world that can cause us to ask even bigger questions than that, especially when the things we see don't seem right. That's why we're talking about how we can see and respond to that kind of stuff, what we can do about the injustice happening all around us. Injustice is anything in our world that's unfair, unequal, or not right. And it's something I think we can all agree we want to do something about, right? But while the feeling of wanting to help is a really good thing, I think it's important to remember this. Seeing injustice could make you feel something that you aren't exactly sure what to do about. Maybe you know what I mean. Maybe you've seen photos of animals kept in cages or treated poorly, and you wondered who would do something like that. Or you've seen videos on the internet of people being hurt or mistreated because of the color of their skin, and you asked, why would somebody treat that person like that? Maybe you've heard someone make fun of another person because of the neighborhood they live in, and you stop to think, they can't help where they live, so why is it okay to make fun of that? No matter what the injustice is, I think that the more we begin to see it happening around us, the more opportunity we have to ask questions about what we're seeing. We may ask things like, why is this happening to me? Or why is this happening to people I love? Why would someone do that? What's wrong with them? Why don't they just leave if they don't like it here? What can be done to stop it? Why isn't anyone doing anything about it? Is there anything I can do to help make this better? To be honest, I've asked all those questions too. But when it comes to injustice, my questions always seem to come back to one huge question. The hardest question for me to understand or find an answer to. If God is so great and so loving and so powerful, why isn't he doing something about this? Can you relate? Maybe you feel nervous that I even said that out loud. I mean, we're at church. We're not supposed to question God here, right? After all, he's God. Even if we don't understand what he's doing, we just have to accept it, right? Or maybe you're like, yeah, that's what I keep asking. You've never said it out loud, but you've wondered the same thing in your mind. How can things like racism and poverty and animal abuse and hunger and crime and discrimination exist in a world that God has power over? If he can do anything he wants, why wouldn't he just do something about all the wrong we see in the world? Maybe you're new to this whole faith stuff, so you're not really sure what you think about this question. But you do know that there are injustices happening all around the world, in your community, at your school, or even in your own life or own family. If that's you, I'm so sorry that you're experiencing this. It matters a lot, and we're gonna keep talking about it. But today, I'd say that for some of you, it may be the reason that you aren't sure about God, after all. He seems silent or like he isn't there as these injustices are happening all around the world or in your own life. No matter how this question makes you feel, here's one thing I want you to be sure of. It's okay to ask questions. In fact, God can handle your questions. He isn't afraid of them. And honestly, I think he wants us to ask them because asking questions is part of what helps us discover more about who God really is. It's what helps us get to the truth. And trust me, we're not the only ones asking big questions about God and injustice. Believers, thinkers, writers, experts, and scholars have been trying to answer these questions for a long time. And the truth is, there are just no easy answers to any of this. Because once we've seen injustice, we know somebody needs to do something. So why does it sometimes feel like God is doing nothing? Maybe you've assumed God doesn't care. 
Maybe you've assumed certain people just have things easier than others. And maybe you think that's because somehow God let it happen that way. Maybe some people just have a harder time in life and God says, oh well, good luck out there. Not much I can do about it. Thankfully, we don't have to guess or assume where God stands on all of this. We don't have to wonder how he feels about injustice. We don't have to guess at what God is really like. We can look at his son, Jesus, who is the best way to see what God is really like. Several people who knew Jesus personally and hung out with him took the time to write down what they saw and heard so that people like you and me, the ones who didn't get to see it with their own eyes, would know what happened. Today, we're gonna take a look at the eyewitness account of Matthew, a book written by one of Jesus's closest followers. Sometimes in church, we call this the book of Matthew or the gospel of Matthew. No matter what you call it, Matthew hung out with Jesus and knew what he was about. Maybe that's why he took the time to write down the things he saw. In this story, here's what he said. Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. So during his ministry on earth, Jesus spent a lot of time traveling around to tell people about God. And in doing that, Jesus talked about a lot of different things that God cared about. Things like people being rescued from captivity, the hungry being fed, the poor being served, and the children being cared for. In other words, Jesus was talking about justice, but Jesus didn't stop there. He also did a lot of different things to help those who were in need around him. He healed and helped people who were sick and suffering all the time. It's almost like everywhere he went back then, Jesus had something to say and do about injustice. The scripture continues. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. This is so important. Jesus didn't just see the people around him and move on. He did things to help them, but he didn't just act to help them because he had to. He helped them because he cared. He had compassion for the people around him and that compassion motivated him to act to help, to do something. And that's what he wants us to do too. He wants us to respond and act, not just because we should, but because we care. See, Jesus showed us what God is like when it comes to injustice. He gave us a model to follow. First, Jesus saw the injustice. And what's cool is that he didn't just see it, he looked for it wherever he went. And he helped others see it too. And when he saw injustice, Jesus cared. So. If you've ever wondered, God is pro-justice. In fact, hundreds of years earlier, he said so through the prophet Isaiah. For I, the Lord, love justice. So we know that God loves justice. We know that he sees it and we know that he cares, but that still doesn't totally answer our question, does it? I mean, if he cares so much, why isn't he stopping it? Why doesn't God just do that old miracle thing he was so good at and fix it all? Why doesn't he do something? Well, I think our answer is actually in the last part of the verse we just read in Matthew. Check out what Jesus said one more time. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So maybe you don't talk about the harvest a lot in your day-to-day -day life, but back then it made a lot of sense. Jesus lived in a community that depended on farming for food. So when he talked about planting and harvesting, he was using that as a way to talk about the work that needed to be done. When he said that the harvest is great, he meant that the work to be done to make the world more like God intended is big. There's a lot of it to do. And the people to do the work, well, there are few of them. Because the work, it isn't easy. And it isn't always fun. And it isn't over and done with quickly. The work to help those who are hurting and struggling and facing injustice is big. But here, Jesus reminds us that there's a plan to see that work done and it's in the workers, the people, like you and me. What if we're the plan? What if we're actually the answer to all the questions we have about what God's doing in the face of injustice? What if it was you and me working on behalf of Jesus to take care of the things he cares about? When it comes to what God is doing about injustice, I think the answer is us. God is opening our eyes to see it. He's giving us the compassion to care about it, and he's calling us to act in response to it. 
He's working through us to see wrongs being made right in the world. And I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty cool. In other words, God is doing something about injustice. What is he doing? Opening our eyes to see it, changing our hearts to care about it, and using us, his followers, to do something about it. The good news is, God is still doing something about injustice, even thousands of years after the events we read in the Bible. Movements that have helped animal rights, women's rights, and voting rights are just a few results of God's followers all around the world, opening their eyes to injustice and choosing to help others. So, where do we start? If we wanna be part of the solution to injustice in the world, where do we begin? How do we change the way we see what God is doing so that we can do something with him? I think we can do two main things. We can start by asking God to help us change our minds. Maybe you need God to help you change your mind about who he is. For so long, you've thought that he doesn't care about injustice. You've believed that he was silent or only blesses certain people while others suffer. For you, a great first step would be to ask God to help you change the way you see him. Ask him to show you that he not only sees injustice, but he cares a lot about it and the people who are hurt by it. Ask him to show you where he's at work when it comes to injustice and how you could be part of what he's doing too. And the truth is, when we ask God to show us how we can be part of what he's doing about injustice, he'll show you something in the world that might just move you to action. By figuring out what injustice in the world breaks your heart, you'll move one step closer to being part of God's plan to do something about injustice. Or maybe for you, you need God to help you change your mind about what it means to follow him. You thought faith was about singing songs or showing up at church or praying a lot. And while those things are all really good things, part of following Jesus also means caring about what he cares about. A great first step would be to ask God to help you see more of what it looks like to follow him, to help you start caring about what he cares about. Maybe you need his help to change your mind about other people. You need him to help change the way you see other people. Because if you're honest, sometimes you struggle to care about the injustices you see happening around you. You struggle to have compassion for others who are different than you. A great first step for you would be to ask God to change the way you see others, to help you see them with his compassion and his heart. And then, I think we need to start asking different questions. Instead of asking, where is God? We can ask things like, what does God think about this person or this situation? What are God's people doing to right this wrong? Who do I listen to in order to learn more about this injustice? What is God calling me to do to help? How can God use me? God is doing something about injustice. And questions like these will help us join in that work with him. It will help us be part of the answer. So let me close by asking you this. What injustice in the world do you care about? Which one moves you to want to act? What do you see in the world around you that makes you want to do something to make it right? Is it racism, untreated illness, unequal treatment of women, animal cruelty? Is it the student who's being bullied, the homeless population in your area, the folks whose families can't afford Christmas presents? Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to share it with your group today. We created groups to be a safe space for you to talk about what's happening in your life and encourage each other to grow in your faith. So today, talk about the injustices that you see. Share what you care about. And then encourage each other to see that God cares too. And he created you to be part of the answer. What if the Christians at your school or in your neighborhood we're the most compassionate and kind and brave and vocal about injustice. What would happen at your school or in your group and in your town? I don't know for sure, but I have to imagine the people you know would be more willing to believe God is doing something when it comes to injustice because they see you doing something.